morning, everyone. Joseph here, Vets Hall Junk Removal, Stafford, Virginia. Up wherever you are, you're staying busy and making money in junk removal. I came upon a really interesting question this morning that was posted on one of the junk removal business owners groups on Facebook. The original poster asked, with the sheer number and avalanche of videos that are being produced about how to succeed in junk removal, all of those how-to videos that guys like me and maybe you are putting out. He asked, do you think it's hurting the junk removal industry as a whole? Do you think it's enticing everybody and anybody to get into junk removal with the belief that it's super simple to make a lot of money in junk removal? And there was a myriad of opinions about this particular subject. And guys, just to put it out there, I have over 200 videos on YouTube right now talking about lessons learned, experiences, and tips that I freely share with you all about how to succeed in junk removal. I do that because, first off, I don't fear competition. I don't compete with anybody but myself. I don't have a poverty mentality. I believe if I have something good, if I found something amazing, I am obligated to share it with my brothers and sisters around the world. But a lot of people don't feel that way. And I can understand where a lot of them are coming from because there is somewhat of a misleading element among the junk removal content providers. There's only a handful of individuals out there who elude in their videos that it's really simple to make a large amount of money regularly in chunk removal. They title their videos like, I don't know, how to make a million dollars in chunk removal, when the odds say that those individuals have never even come close to making a million dollars. You'll hear guys talk about how they they just closed a job where they made $72,000 on a particular project, which is not unheard of in junk removal, but they fail to talk about how extremely difficult it is for the average Joe who just has a pickup truck to even get a fraction of the amounts that they're talking about. I agree that those individuals that post misleading type videos about how easy it is to make uh, make money in junk removal, I think those guys are wrong. They show their their bank statements or their, their invoices and they do this primarily to just get clicks, sort of as clickbait. There was so many different opinions on this and what I continued to see, not from everyone, which made me very proud and very happy to be in the same group as many like-minded individuals who feel the same way about sharing this content as I do, but there was a lot of poverty mentality in some of these comments, guys. There are quite a few individuals saying, you know, when these low ballers, these tweakers, um, undercut us. It really hurts everyone in junk removal. It makes it more difficult for us to grow our businesses. Guys, yeah, in my area, Northern Virginia, I have a lot of individuals who undercut my rates, who charge way less. Some of them even do it for free. I don't sweat it, guys. I really don't because my target market is not the customer who's looking for low rates, although everybody is, okay? But my customer's primary concern is not getting the lowest rate. The, the customer that I target, my customer's primary concern, okay, primary selling point, is that they're looking for background screened, drug tested, uniformed, showing up in wrapped vehicles, wearing a uniform, courteous, know how to answer the telephone. And those individuals are looking for a junk removal company who encompass and live everything that I just mentioned. They're not really concerned about getting the lowest rate because they realize that when you get the lowest rate, sometimes you get what you pay for. They're looking for a top tier junk removal company. And those are the customers that I really target. So do I concern myself? Do, do I concern myself with 
low ballers? No, I don't. I guess if you're chasing every potential job out there, if you are undervaluing your services and you're going after those lowballing customers that this these tweakers you feel these tweakers are going to take away from you and i think perhaps the issue may be with you there's so much money in junk removal there are so many customers there's enough customers for everyone i often say if i got just a fraction a teeny tiny fraction of one percent of all the customers in my geographic area that i service i would still have so many customers that I wouldn't be able to service all of them. So I don't sweat it. I realize that not every customer is meant to be mine. So I target a very specific customer, the customer that is willing to pay a premium rate. But where the problem begins is when you have many of these junk removal entrepreneurs out there that are lowering their rates so much, so significantly that they themselves are not even making a profit. But do I concern myself with those individuals? I don't. You run your business the way you want to run it. I'll run my business the way I want to run it. You know, I often say, don't concern yourself with the rates that ABC Junk Removal is charging down the street. Don't concern yourself with the guy who, pick up, who picks up scrap metal for free. They don't affect you guys. They don't affect your bottom line. They don't affect your business. Anything that they do negatively or positively really doesn't affect you. If, they, if you feel that they are taking customers away from you by lowballing. I truly believe the problem is with you. You have a poverty mentality, guys. Um, and that is one of the biggest problems in junk removal. Not, that problem doesn't affect me, okay? But it is a problem because I truly believe that for anyone to succeed, you must charge what you're worth. You must understand and realize that your junk removal service is valuable, guys. It's extremely valuable. And when you undercut yourself, okay, when you charge such a low rate that, <laughs> you know, you're making very little profit, if any, you're only hurting yourself. You're not affecting me. So do I think that the influx, the sheer number of the avalanche of videos that are being produced by junk removal entrepreneurs are hurting us as a whole. Well, it doesn't hurt me. If you, if you feel that it hurts you guys, once again, I'll say it, then that is a poverty mentality. Be like the racehorse, okay? When the racehorse is racing, when he's on the track, he's wearing blinders. There's all kinds of competition. Everybody wants to win the race around him. Okay, he has competition to his left and his right. But the racehorse doesn't concern himself with who's on his right or left, whether they're beating him or not, because the racehorse doesn't have the ability to look to the left or the right. He can only look straight ahead and stay focused on the goal, on completing the mission, on winning the race. I think that when you, when you have that poverty mentality that... In order for me to win, the lowballers have to lose. You know what? Let the lowballers do what they're going to do. Don't concern yourself with the lowballers. The lowballers will put themselves out of business eventually. And as a matter of fact, most of these lowballers, like I said, like I mentioned earlier, what constitutes a leader in the junk removal industry, these lowballers don't encompass that. They're ununiformed. Their vehicles are not marked. Typically, they don't know how to engage with the customer on the telephone. When they show up, they do shoddy work. They're sloppy, okay? When you take your focus off of your mission and your goal, and you put it on everybody else, guys, your business is the one that suffers. Somebody else mentioned, <clears throat> instead of making videos about how wonderful junk removal is, how about creating videos that promote the standards in junk removal. Maybe make a video about hooking up, how to hook up a trailer to a truck, which I think is a really great idea. I'm probably going to do that. But I have so much knowledge, guys, that I feel obligated to be able to share it with each and every one of you guys out there. And I think that if we had more of a mentality of sharing lessons learned and not being so concerned about, you know, who's beating us or who's you know, pricing is out of a job and we readily shared information with each other. We could all maintain a certain standard of pricing, but unfortunately, 
that will probably never be. So we could cry about it. We could bitch about it. We could complain about it. Wah, wah, wah. Okay? You're never going to change it. So just do the best that you possibly can do. And don't worry about everybody else. Somebody else said, I almost wish that this industry fails. So that those of you who say tweakers and lowballers don't affect you, so you can actually see how they negatively affect you or something like that. Guys, if that is the way that individual feels, then that's a him problem. That's not a me problem. Why would you want to <laughs> why would you want to break your nose to spite your face? If this industry fails, okay, you're gonna fail as well. You're gonna be put out of business. Instead of having that poverty mentality that it's us versus them, that if you win, that means I'm going to lose and vice versa. You get on there. You start making videos. You do your little part to make this industry better. Start making videos about encouraging others to stop doing things that elude to junk removal is so easy and everybody can do it because it's not so. Instead, start producing these types of videos that will elevate the junk removal industry as a whole, instead of complain and do nothing about everyone around you who you feel is hurting your business, who you feel is causing you to lose out on income and jobs. I've owned many businesses in my life, as well as being one of the nation's most successful military recruiters. And I can tell you, sharing information, readily sharing information, readily helping your brother to succeed, okay, creating alliances, creating partnerships, creating friendships. Guys, I would rather make an ally versus an enemy. It's a you issue, guys. Do your part. If you're if you're not happy with the videos that are being produced, then golly gosh darn it, get off your flipping ass and do something to change it. But complaining, okay, about all of the videos that are being produced and how they're hurting the junk removal industry as a whole does nothing for you or me. So I just wanted to share this uh, this outlook that I have on creating videos for junk removal. You know, guys, I don't post videos about how much I make because every market is different. I don't ever show you the the checks and the amounts that are written on these checks. I don't ever talk about you know, how I'm making X amount of dollars on this particular job. I don't tell you, you know, what I charge for my jobs. I've been asked many, many times to share that type of information, but I don't do that because I never want to elude to the fact that you can do it. Maybe you can't. Maybe you don't have enough heart. Maybe you're not good at business. Maybe you have a poverty mentality. Not everyone can do and succeed in this type of business. It takes a very special kind of person to create and operate an extremely successful junk removal business. Am I going to continue to make videos about junk removal? Yes, I am. Do I think I'm hurting people out there, you know, other junk removal entrepreneurs who are just trying to make it? I don't think so, guys. And if I am, step up your game. Innovate, okay? Outwork the competition. I'm not the largest junk removal company in my area, but I'm probably the most innovative I'm probably the hardest worker, the hardest working entrepreneur of all the junk removal companies in my area, okay? If somebody else is outworking me, if somebody else is outselling me, then that means I'm weak. If I fail in junk removal, that means I was weak. My business plan, okay? My business outlook wasn't where it should be, all right? And I'll be darned, guys. I'll be darned if I'm going to be the last in line through my sheer force and will of determination, I will succeed even if there were a million junk removal videos produced out there. And you have to remember one thing. You can lead a horse to water, but you cannot make them drink. With all of the videos out there where I talk about, guys, get into junk removal. This is where the money is. And if you want to grow, start producing videos. That's one of the best ways to grow your junk removal business. With all of this information, all of this good, positive business information that will lead you to success that I create... Most individuals who watch my videos will get motivated for about that long and then they'll go right back to watching television and they'll forget all about 
the great things we talked about because they have a poverty mentality. Don't have a poverty mentality. Have a positive winning attitude and mentality. And no matter what anybody else does, it does not affect you. That being said, if you like the type of things I talk about, would you subscribe to my YouTube channel? I also love to read your comments, so please leave a comment. If you want to be made aware the next time I make a video, hit the bell icon. If you're in Northern Virginia and you have stuff that you just want removed so you can reclaim your space, mattresses, jacuzzis, sheds, furniture, or what have you, you can reach out to us at 540-657-VETS. That's 540-657-VETS. We can be found online at VetsHallJunk.com. That's VetsHallJunk.com. I'm Joseph, owner of Vets Hall Junk Removal LLC in Stafford, Virginia. And we are on the move making things happen. Hoo-wah. Talk to you next time. See ya.